Hi, I'm Carl Lewis, and this is the Bet Central Podcast. Okay, welcome back to the Bet Central Podcast, powered by Betcoza. I'm back with our favorite rugby punter, Neil. And today we'll preview the Super Rugby, Gallagher Premiership, and the URC. So once again, a action-packed weekend. Um, and yeah, before I check into Neil, I have to make note that our weekend uh, started with a bang last week. Good Friday's solid sa- solid Saturday start. Um, how did it end for you, though, Neil, uh, betting-wise? Yeah, Carl, um, without, without tooting my own horn here, it was, a, it was an absolutely cracking weekend. Started off like a house on fire with the with the Chiefs putting in a, a proper performance against the Crusaders. Great call. I was, Great I, was call. I was relatively strong on the Waratahs to to cause an upset against the Brumbies, but that wasn't to be. Then into into Saturday, it was a it was more more of the same for me. Drew, Drew, I managed to get on the Drew to beat Pacifica, so that landed. I was all over the Blues to to cover that spread against the Highlanders, and likewise the Hurricanes to cover against the Reds, and then also the, the Force to cover against the Rebels. So. It was a five from six weekend for me over in Super Rugby, so cracking one and no complaints at all. Okay, okay, maybe a full house this week, and I mean we still got the Gallagher and URC, um, quite a action packed URC. We've got some great games there, uh, a full slate once again. So yeah, club rugby. This is where we should be making our money, and hopefully we can make it another good weekend. Uh, let's get stuck in then. The the surprise of last week, at least for me, not for you, you did kind of uh, call it. Yes, you said on the plus, but I, I, I felt like you had a sneaky suspicion that the Chiefs could uh, pull off the actual W, not just cover the spread. But yeah, Crusaders uh, back at home against the Highlanders. Now, two teams that lost last weekend. The Highlanders took a big hiding from the Blues, 60-20. And of course, the Chiefs result, 31-10. Like that really surprised me. Uh, Neil, but heading into this match, the Chiefs, the Crusaders rather, are heavily favored against the Islanders. 17 and a half. Your thoughts? Yeah, Carl, first off, it's important to note that all these games are getting played in Melbourne this weekend. So at oh, AMA yes. Park. So not not a lot of home ground advantage to speak of. So if you if you were sort of trying to look to capitalize on that, just just be a bit wary. But getting stuck into this Crusaders Highlanders um fixture, I'm I'm all over the Crusaders here once again. Um, I, it's more just a case of opposing the Highlanders. They've just been they've just been shot in off season. Already had injury problems in round one. We saw how the, that blue side was able to absolutely tear them apart. I just can't see where the results going to come from, especially in the early rounds of this of the season for the Highlanders. The Crusaders, on the other hand, you don't you don't often see them lose, and especially you, you really don't see them lose two two in a row here. So I think they're going to come out like a house on fire. Razor Robertson's not going to be chuffed with last week's performance over in Christchurch. I expect sort of the the early the early season jitters to be uh, well, well behind them right now. So I accept, I'm expecting a seriously polished Crusaders performance at 17 and a half. I just can't make a case for the Highlanders. I just you just have to be on the Crusaders camp in this one. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I mean, they took uh, the Highlanders took such a big hiding, and yeah, I totally forgot about um, the all six matches. Uh, three double headers Friday, a festival of rugby in Melbourne at Army Park. Uh, double headers on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, uh, very cool for uh, the Aussies. You know, uh, nice games on um, uh, each day of the weekend. So, yeah, totally. Thank you for uh, uh, reminding the listeners about that. Okay, we off the mark. Crusaders min- minus seventeen and a half. We going with them against the uh, lowly Highlanders. It looks like it could be a long season for them already. Um, okay, from one big spread to another, we've got the Rebels. They host the Hurri- Well, I say host. They take on the Hurricanes. Uh, the spread again, 17 and a half. And like you said um, last week, uh, you fancied the Hurricanes to do one over the Reds, 47-13. And they face a Rebel side um, who lost 34-27. But uh, you called that, I think you called the force as well there. Um, 17 and a half, where are you going? Yeah, Carl. Once again, not a lot, not a lot for the Rebels in this one. Very much in a in a transition phase. Just a lot of, I, I suppose you could say, is a bit of a, a hopscotch talent scattered throughout their side. A couple of players who I, I guess can show a bit of promise. Likes of Monte Iwani, down to the Italian international on the wing. He's he's a good player. Reese Hodge in the centres has his up and down in form, especially at at provincial level. He always seems to be be uh, put in better performances when he when he strips on the Wallabies gold. 
But just at club club rugby, I think he sort of just struggles to to have that same sort of impact. So Kevin Foote's charges are in for what I predict a, another long evening um, in Melbourne on on Friday. Whereas the Hurricanes, they got off their season to an absolute cracker. First half, half it was definitely still sort of feeling their way through the game, just sort of looking to get the combinations and chemistry right there and kicking. But now they've got 80 minutes under the belt, and I expect them to to put in a seriously um, strong performance here. So many, so much quality scattered throughout this this Hurricane side. Uh, littered with game breakers, likes of Artie Sevier, Jordy Barrett, even Billy Proctor's making a name for himself and making that number 13 jersey his own for, for the Hurricanes. So much sort of threat out wide in Celeste Riasi, uh, Julian Sevier and Josh Morby. Josh Morby has been absolutely awesome over in the NPC, so um, I'm very excited to see how he steps up over into the Super Rugby competition now. So I just can't see the Rebels sticking with this. They'll put in a fairly good shift in the first 25 minutes defensively, but then I expect a couple of sort of a couple of sort of hit back from the Hurricanes sort of right before half time. And the flag gets to sort of cash in um, after half time. So minus 17 and a half. I know it's a big spread for and going against the home side, but I think it's just a spread that you have to take in this one. So yeah, full value for me on the Hurricanes minus 17. Okay, so the, our Friday double header, we're expecting two hidings. Um, we expecting the favorites to cover 17 and a half. Uh, let's move to Saturday now. And big spreads uh, still the theme for our eight o'clock match, the first of uh, the double headers, Moana Pacifica, they take on the Chiefs, the spread 23 and a half um, against the Chiefs, who obviously uh, pulled off the big upset last week and in very convincing fashion, 31 uh, 10. After being down 10 0, I thought, oh, okay, you know, the Chiefs, I mean, um, the Crusaders back to business as usual, but they showed us. And then Moana Pacifica entertaining a game against the Drua, 34 uh, 36, but they did lose. Uh, what's your thoughts here? Yeah, Carl, another another massive spread, I guess you could say. But I just had a brief look at the two fixtures that these two sides played against each other. And the, the smallest win margin was was 33 points last year between the Chiefs and uh, Moana uh, Pacifica. I can't I can't think that Pacifica have strengthened too much in the offseason. Whereas Chiefs, they really looked the business last weekend against the Crusaders. And I'm sure they don't want to rest on their laurels this weekend and against slightly easier opposition. They want to target that full five point or sort of brush off the any sort of slip ups that they that they would have gone through in the video analysis against the Crusaders and really put in a, another polished performance here. So minus twenty three and a half. I, I just it's a massive cap, but I just have to take the Chiefs here. Chiefs have got absolutely watertight defense. I mean, to only only concede ten points against the Crusaders over in Christchurch is is some feat, which which mm. really must be recognised. So just so much attacking attacking talent scattered throughout the Chiefs. Damian McKenzie back at first five. He'll look look to put in another polished performance. Brody Rotalic in the engine room. Yeah, I think there's just a lot to like about the Chiefs um, in, in this year's Super Rugby competition. So 23 and a half. Yeah, I can't make a case for Pacifica. So Chiefs it is for me. Okay. Our second match of our Saturday doubleheader, just after 10.30, the Drua, who obviously beat the Moana Pacifica narrowly by two points. They're up against the Warrior Tars. Uh, the Tars are the favorites here. They're favored by seven and a half. Um, the Tars did lose out albeit by six points to the Brumbies in, in, um, on Friday last week. Your thoughts here, Neil? Uh, it seems like this, I, I know the Drua can, you know, uh, be a thorn in someone's side, but I think at this spread, I'm likely to take the Tars, um, but I'm more than willing to listen to you. Yeah, Carl, I'm, I'm firm in the Tars camp here. I expect a big bounce back on the cards. I thought for the large, large parts of the fixture, they were, they were very impressive against the Brumbies. Mm hanging in for very much large portions of the game. I thought for for at one point they could have gone on to win that fixture. But playing the Brumbies is never never an easy task, especially sort of the battle of the top uh, the top seed of conference over in, in Australia there. But I expect this Waratah side to have a full bounce back. Drew against against Pacific, I thought were quite lucky at times. They didn't the I th- I thought they were almost a bit a bit lucky to actually get a result out of that game. I thought Pacific were probably the better side on the day besides a couple of sort of mercurial Drew tries there. So coming up against a, a better organized side, a lot more focus on the set piece. I, I just think that that's where the Fijian drill will ultimately struggle in this. I'm not too sure how their discipline will hold up against what, what is a quite a disciplined Waratah side. Mm. So at minus seven and a half, this handicap is seven points too small for me. So once again, I'm sticking to the minus here and back in the Waratahs. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I, I like that spread. It's not obviously, it's the smallest one uh, yet. And I do feel the Tars are much better than 17 points. Uh, but still early doors in Super Rugby Pacific. Um, talking about early doors, Sunday, for uh, for South Africans at least, the first game of the doublehead on Sunday in Super Rugby, that's at five. The Blues versus the Brumbies. Uh, 
all a very nice fixture. Let it let's not get it twisted. I'm I could definitely see myself waking up for that. Um, but the Blues, uh, they top of the table, obviously, after their 60 20 win. The Brumbies, uh, business as usual, they got their first win under the belt uh, against the Tars. The spread here is 11 and a half, favoring the Blues. This is a bit more tricky, perhaps. Yeah, I think on face value it it looks a bit bit tricky. If this if this game was was getting played in an auction, I would have told you to give your grandparents a call and asked for for the retirement fund savings early and to lump it on that blues minus. But I think it definitely does sort of add a add a bit more bit more flavor to the fixture that the, it's getting played on what you can call neutral territory. But just the performance that I saw from the Blues last weekend, they were absolutely relentless in in dispatching that that Highlander side. In past seasons gone by, when the Blues have sort of they've had all the the stars scattered across the park, they sort of lost their heads. When they were clearly the more dominant side, thrown passes which didn't need to be passed, and really just struggled to ultimately put an opposition to the sword. But from what I saw last weekend, it seems like that's that's a thing of the past. This Brumby side, it's always going to be a, a good and competitive Brumby side, but I just don't think that they can they can match the quality that the Blues are putting out here. So minus eleven and a half, yeah, I, I can see Blues Blues romping to a big victory here. So I'm happy to take them on the minus. Okay, we really fancying the favourites um, uh, this weekend. Let's see if that will change with our final fixture and all. Aussie affair, the Western Force versus the Reds. Uh, that's at 7.30. The Reds are favored by six and a half. Uh, like I said, the four, the, the Force, they won the opener against, <clears throat> against the Rebels. Whereas the Reds, they lost theirs against the Hurricanes. And it was quite a hiding. Um, yeah, this might be a bit tricky. Or do you see the Reds being too powerful? Yeah, Carl, this, this for me is the, the trickiest fixture of the weekend uh, to call, it's just for, for a couple of reasons. Um, so the Reds, Reds seem like they're going to welcome back a couple of players. Likes of James O'Connor and, and Vuni Vali should be available, and as well as, as club captain Liam Wright should be available for this fixture. So those are three big boosts for the Reds. And you could see that they were missing that sort of leadership ability last weekend against, against the Hurricanes. Whereas Western Force, and I haven't said a lot about this Western Force side, they were able to to come back from behind. I know, it, I guess it was on their home turf. When they were about four, 14 points behind, I think they lost out to about a 17-3 uh, lead early in the in the first half. They were able to come back from, and I, and I guess it was against the lowly Rebels, but sort of gather the troops together and, co- and come back from that victory and ultimately win that game. So I think that, that shows big character from the Force. So they'll look, be very much looking to build on that performance here. So I feel like the force in this one, it's not often that they can smell blood. So they'll definitely be smelling blood against against this red side. So plus six and a half. Yeah, that's 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 enough comfort for me to to take the four side here. Okay. All right. Well, uh six games, a double header on uh, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Super Rugby. All the matches happening in Melbourne, as we stated. Your best bets, Steel. Sure, Carl. It's an absolutely bumper roster, but but the most confident bets will be that Waratahs to to cover against the Drua, and then also that Crusaders side to to dispatch the Highlanders, and then lastly that Blues side to to cover the spread against the Brumbies. Okay, okay, that's Super Rugby done and dusted. We do also have two fixtures um, in the URC, which we'll take on next, and we've got a lot of fixtures, a full slate. Um, some nice ties to to look at in the URC. Let's start off on Friday with Munster versus Scarlets. Uh, Munster, as you'd expect, being at home, heavily favoured uh, against the Scarlets. The Scarlets, yeah, uh, uh, Munster rather. I feel like um, I've seen genuine improvement from them this season. And I like what I've been seeing. They're on a four-match winning streak in the competition. Uh, the Scarlets themselves... I know it doesn't seem like it, but they themselves are also on a four-match winning streak. But I think that comes to an end um, on Friday. However, the big question is, will Munster cover this big spread, 16 and a half, at home? Neil? Yeah, Kat, I think the, the URC is, for me, it's a bit bit more difficult this, than, than Super Rugby, especially uh, this weekend. A lot of, lot of tight fixtures, a lot of sort of uncertainty about which players are going to be released from international duty. What's the motivation behind each side? Are they still pushing for those playoff spots? So there could be a couple of dead rubbers where where maybe a couple of sort of A slash B teams get, get run out here. But at 16 and a half for this Munster side, I really like them to cover the spread. I like what they've been able to do in the build up to this. Once again, I've, I've, I've touched on it before that they're at the start of the URC season. They went through, went through a bit of a slump in form, but they've, they've very much managed to pick that up, especially after the, after the Christmas break. I think they'll be sm- smelling blood when they when they host Dwayne Pills, uh, Scott Scarlet side here. 
still a lot of uncertainty regarding contracts. He there was a bit of bit of media release that apparently all the all the players that Scarlet have wanted to keep are, are close to signing new deals. So that's fantastic for okay. them and and I guess the future of Welsh rugby. But coming up against against uh, sort of a red hot monster monster side over at Thorman Park is no easy task, especially on a cold a cold night there. So at sixteen and a half, I expect uh, much of the same from Munster, and I think that they'll cover this. Okay, yeah, I would say that as well. Um, same time is, uh, is the second fixture just after half past nine. Um, it's the Glasgow Warriors versus Zebra. Now you have to fancy uh, the Glasgow Warriors here. I mean, yes, I, I think we look at last week's fixture against the Lions as, you know, it's one trip to South Africa for one week. I don't think a lot of focus was put on that. But before that, they were really showing that they are a team to be reckoned with. Uh, I think they were on a four or five match winning streak. And then they're facing Zebra, who haven't won at home and or even poorer uh, away from home, um, who haven't won the season, but they're very poor away from home. The spread, 22 and a half, nil. It's hard to make a case for Zebra. I'll be very honest with you. Are you willing to? Sure, Carl. Yeah, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's exceptionally difficult to make a case for Zebra here, especially um, away from their home turf. They just often look disinterested in on on their sort of on their travels and their road games here. Glask, on the other hand, I mentioned before that I wasn't sure that the motivation would be would be too high traveling away to Johannesburg for one game, playing in sort of unfamiliar conditions, uh, blisteringly hot over there in Johannesburg, lots of altitude to deal with. So ultimately, they came unstuck in that fixture. But right back on their home turf, we've seen what they've been able to do. 22 and a half, it's a big spread, but I think just the the, the right money has to has to go on Glasgow to cover this one. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Neil. <laughs> I, I, it's hard for me to, especially if Zebra is away from home, to say anything. I like them on a plus uh, when they're playing at home, but yeah, away from home on their travels, perhaps not. Let's go to Saturday. Now, Saturday is, there's some really, really good ties here. And there's two South African derbies to start the um, the day off. Half past two, it's the Stormers versus the Sharks, a coastal derby. Um, Stormers, seven and a half favorites. The Sharks, they must be kicking themselves for their performance last week against Ulster. Um, and, I mean, they getting themselves, they're making this qualification difficult for them because the likes of Cardiff, and Benetton, they kind of a win away from being touching distance of the Sharks in the top eight race. The Sharks are currently seventh on 40 points. And well, we know about the Stormers. The Stormers have been playing uh, really well. Uh, second at the moment, um, five points ahead of Ulster, who are in third. At seven and a half, Neil, I like the Stormers because they've been impressive in um, the, these uh, home derbies recently. What do you think? Yeah, Carl. This is a oh, this is this one gives a bit of a scratch to the to the head. So, with if if the Sharks had ultimately won that fixture against Ulster, I would be quite strong on the on this plus year. But they shot themselves in the foot last weekend. They were ahead at times, just discipline costing them. Sort of a lot of a lot of just um, inability to manage key moments in the game cost them. And I just think that traveling across to Cape Town Stadium, where the storm is on a high, I'm, I'm sure the stadium is going to be absolutely packed. Close to twenty five thousand people will be there for this for this early kickoff. Lots of motivation for the Stormers players. No Springboks available, but these second choice these second choice players for the Stormers are very much motivated to to make a claim here. So mm. there's just such a good feel feel good factor over in the Stormers camp. So it's really tough to make a, a case for the traveling Shark side. We've seen the Sharks' performance sort of on the road. It hasn't been the best best at times. So I just think that the Stormers could pull one more over them and and cover this handicap. So not not the most amount of confidence, just because it's I expect it to be a really tightly fought derby. But at six and a half, seven and a half, I just feel like you have to just take the form side in this one. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, I'm, I'm really low on the Sharks. And I, I don't think that Union is in a good space. And uh, with so much money that has already been invested, I think there's a lot of pressure and it's not good vibes coming up from Durban at the moment. Okay. Our second derby, it's the YXK derby in Pretoria uh, at Loftus, the Bulls versus the Lions. The spread, 13 and a half, uh, favoring Jake White's men. Um, yeah, but the line surprised, surprised us. I think you you did call a win in fairness, but I wasn't too confident about that. Um, obviously beat uh, Glasgow last week. Uh, the Bulls, they would need this win. They lost four, five games. They've only won one. Uh, so they need to get back on track for their qualification push. Uh, your thoughts here, 13 and a half. What do you think? 
Yeah, I'm I'm all over the Bulls here. Um, I, I think this is this is cracking value that you're getting uh, getting here. Bulls Bulls have what have been a little bit disappointing, I think I think recently. But once again, over in their over in their, their home patch at Loftus, they're just completely different gravy here. I see that there's been a lot of pressure on social media. The the Bulls director of rugby, William Strauss, has been looking to very much push the the crowd sales here. So I expect a very very spirited Bulls performance. Lions, on the other hand, they don't have a great head to head record over against yeah. against the Bulls. I can't see them getting too much out of this fixture. They played their their so called final last weekend and in, in getting full marks against against Glasgow here. There are definitely going to be a couple of tired bodies here. It's, it's tough getting pushing week after week, especially in in the earlier months of the year over in that in that heat. I just feel that with the slightly rested Bulls uh, Bulls legs, they could really put this line side to the sword here. So I'm expecting I'm expecting a massive massive Bulls performance here. Minus thirteen okay. and a half. Get on it. It's a cracker. Okay, I wish I shared your confidence there, uh, but I hear you. Um, the Bulls are a different beast at home. Um, and yeah, the Lions faced a side that were just in South Africa for a quick stop-off. Uh, maybe their focus wasn't there, so yeah. Uh, Bulls minus 13 over the Lions. Like you said, the head-to-head record does suit the Bulls, so fair enough. Uh, let's move on. Let's move to Scotland now. Uh, just after 7 o'clock on Saturday. South African time, they host Leinster, who uh, are yet to lose this season. 14 games, 14 wins. The spread is eight and a half. I like Leinster here. I mean, if Edinburgh weren't so poor of late and, ha- and haven't, they've been disappointing me uh, a lot in the past three mo- two to three months. I just can't with any confidence take them on the plus. There was a time where I would, might have taken a fancy on them with this plus, but that's not me with Edinburgh anymore. Your thoughts, Neil? Yeah, Carl. I think the the, the sentiment is very much similar there. It's it's a tricky one to call. Um, Edinburgh on paper, they always always really look the part, and you always just want to stick your money behind them. But I just think they've proven time and time against the handicap. I'd love to do a bit of a write up on their on their sort of form against the handicap um, this season, I, and I don't think it'll be too much for uh, for too too pretty reading there. But Lentz, on the other hand, just can produce week in week out. If it's their B side playing, it's the the outcome still the same. Just polished performance, just so much sort of enthusiasm in the way that they go about their business. No sort of ambition to take their foot off the gas towards the end of end of the competition or, or ultimately in the end of fixtures at all. They're just such a polished unit, so much quality scattered throughout the ranks. Ridiculously quality and, and talented um, academy that they're, that they're boasting there. So at eight and a half, they won't be too uh, too intimidated traveling away to Scotland here. I just expect it's going to be business as usual and Leicester to cover the handicap on Saturday. Okay, yeah, I'm with you there. Uh Quarter past seven, uh, we have another one this time in Wales. It's the Ospreys. They host uh, Benetton. Uh, now, the Ospreys has been someone we have spoken about uh, glowingly in the past few months. Um, they are at home. They are favored, five and a half. Uh, Benetton, uh, also perhaps not the greatest on their travels, but there is something to play for for them. They are just one point behind, behind Connacht, who are eighth, um, and Benetton are tenth. So, there's legit, legitimate. Um, there's something for Benetton to play for, legitimately. Yeah. So yeah, with the spread at five and a half, where are you going, Italians, or are you sticking with the Welsh? I know you're not very high on the Welsh, but you know, Ospreys has done decently here and there. Yeah, I can't. It's it's a, it's a tricky handicap. Um, just Ospreys have had a fantastic run in after over the Christmas period and then into the New Year. But sort of the wheels came off against against that month's decide where they where they took an absolute hammering. I, I expect a sort of a couple of players still still to be seated on the on the medical benches for this one. Playing against the Benetton side, which which for for the first time in a while they've got a sniff at sort of a, a playoff opportunity here. So I know Benetton's form, um, especially away from home from home, isn't in, isn't anything to to hop on about. But I just feel like that there could be sort of a bit of a renewed vigor floating across across Benetton at the moment, especially with the way that the Italians have performed over over in Super Rugby uh, to date. That that Italian side is is really looking the business. They've covered all three handicaps, and not only that, but they've really put in stellar performances under Kieran Crowley. So I expect, I, well, and I sort of slightly hope that that can sort of ripple ripple down into the franchises here. So plus five and a half for Benetton, I, I just think that I've got a, a slight inkling here. Not too much stats or anything to base this on, but I think, I think that they can push Ospreys right to the end and cover the spread. Okay. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, there has been a lot of times where uh, Benetton have surprised us, and when they when they playing, they they quite hot. So I'm I'm comfortable with your call there. Um, just after half past nine, staying on Saturday, Cardiff versus Ulster. Ulster uh, must be jumping up in the air after their win 
against the Sharks last week. Uh, they face a Cardiff side, yeah, who blow hot and cold, but also still in the running for a top eight finish. Like Benetton, they're only one point behind um, Connacht. Uh, they are in ninth, whereas Ulster, they third on the log. Uh, trying to chase the Stormers, that win last week against the Sharks would have done a lot for them. Alster minus five and a half. You're going to take the Irish here. Yeah, Carl, full value for the Irish in this one. Um, I was really impressed with the way Alster navigated that performance against the Sharks. It was a very, very mature performance. They sort of were able to sort of withstand anything that the Sharks threw at them. Once again, difficult conditions when you're traveling across from from some chilly weather over over to South Africa and right in the middle of summer over here. So I, th- I think it was a, a seriously impressive performance, and I don't think that they've got enough credit for the way that they were able to uh, to sort of unbundle that that shark side away from home. So back on their home turf, way more familiar territory, playing against the Cardiff side, which I don't have a lot of love for. So I just think that Ulster will be way too powerful here and ultimately cover this handicap. Okay, fair enough. I'm with you there, Neil. I'm, I'm taking that as well. Um, okay, let's go on. It's the Dragons versus Connacht. Um, the Dragons, they are... I was about to say they are favoured. The Irish are favoured. Connacht, minus five and a half. Uh, they face a Dragon side who are second from bottom. They have won three games of their 14 this season, but still, they are second uh, from bottom on a heavy losing streak here. So it's hard for me to look past that and look past Connacht, minus five and a half. They've won three in a row in this competition. They're in the top eight. Uh, a lot to play for from their perspective. Um, yeah, Irish on the minus here. Yeah, I'm actually gonna gonna oppose this here. Um, I like I like dragons to to okay. cover the spread. Um, they've had a couple of players uh, released uh, from from international duty from the Wales camp, so they 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 will be boosted there. I would have loved this handicap to be sitting at about seven or eight, and then I would have would have punted this with a lot more confidence. Five and a half is always tricky because it's below the below the the two penalty mark and obviously the yeah. converted try. But connect away from home, they don't always sort of get the best of their opposition. Way, way more dangerous over at the at the sports ground in in Galway here. Dragons, I've just got a funny feeling. I think that they're going to sort of right the wrongs of of all sort of the the ghosts that are going to get shown up in the Welsh rugby this weekend and and put in quite a performance here. So very much boosted by the returning internationals. So I think that Dragons could cover the spread. So I'm looking to take that plus five and a half. Okay, okay. Well, I, I guess when it uh, when international players are released. And one or two players can make a big difference for their clubs. And in a match like this, uh, Connacht, not perhaps the strongest um, Irish side. So, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, Although my heart still lies with Connacht, I think that just comes from looking at the log and having seen Dragons play over the season. But I think your reasoning is fair, Neil. Um, I'm going to push you for your best bets in the URC. Sure, Carl. So it is. It, I must must start off by saying a bit of a disclaimer. It's a, it's a tricky couple of games here. It, there's there's nothing um, besides the ones that I'm going to mention now that absolutely shout out value. Unlike unlike sort of past weeks gone by. But to touch on my most confident players, that that Bulls minus thirteen and a half has just been staring at me all weekend. I think that's an absolutely cracking player there. And then I really really like that Ulster Ulster minus five and a half against Cardiff. I can really see them rolling over over that Cardiff side. So those two get the nod for me this weekend. Okay. I personally like the Leinster one, and I like, I think it will be close, but I do think the Stormers will have a bit too much for um, the Sharks. Uh, but um, yeah, that's that's just me. Like you said, very tricky uh, fixtures in the URC there, uh, but still ex- some exciting matches. Obviously, the headliners uh, for us Saffirs is the two South African Derby, so excited for that. But we still have the entertaining Gallagher Premiership to go through. Um, and we have uh, five fixtures uh, Friday, one on Friday, two on Saturday, and two on Sunday. And let's start in Bristol on Friday night, up against Northampton, who have got two wins on the trot, uh, or three wins on the trot, and a big win against Gloucester in the context of the uh, top four. And for Bristol, they've been putting their best foot forward. Two wins on the trot for them as well. Last week, they beat your beloved Bath. But then in that same breath, Bristol is also one of your favorite teams. So I think you were smiling either way. With the spread at three and a half, Bristol at home against Northampton, what are you thinking? Yeah, Carl, this, this is a tricky fixture. I think it's going to be full value for uh, from a viewer spectacle. Both seriously dangerous sides. Both got their attacking weapons scattered throughout. But just Northampton's home uh, form away from, from Franklin's Gardens isn't 
um, isn't where it should be. I expect that, that they'll sort of come unstuck against this Bristol side. Bristol, in the last couple of weeks, are starting to sort of string a couple of performances and, and really just come into the Bristol of old, uh, most notably in, in being underdogs and then, and then edging out Bath at the, at the wreck there. So back on, their, back on their home turf here, Bristol minus three and a half. I just think that is too good to ignore in this one. Okay, fair enough. That's we off the mark in the Gallagher Premiership. Let's move to um, Saturday, five o'clock. Leicester take on Bath. The spread is twelve and a half, favouring Leicester. Leicester they also had a, a big win against Irish. Uh, uh, Irish were at home, so a nice away win for the Tigers. Um, yeah, big spread. But do you fancy them against this Bath side? Sure, Carl. This is this is this is a tricky one. Um, Le- Leicester got got full value in getting that away victory over against against London Irish last weekend, and the week the weekend before that also put in a commanding display. Back back at home, uh, sure. This is just this is just a really difficult one. I just got an inkling that Bath sort of just just come up with the goods here um, somehow. Not too sure where it's going to come from. They'll be without the kingpin and Ollie Lawrence. There's still a couple of players on the medical beds uh, for Bath in this one. Leicester are just really looking to to get stuck into that sort of championship winning form that they that they displayed last season. Andre Pollard and Jasper Vies are hitting hitting their straps just at the right time. So it really does make a strong case for for Leicester in this one. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with my gut here and just take a very very tentative call on the on this Bath plus. Absolutely no motivation to back this one up. It's just one of those one of those things as a rugby punter when you sort of get that that tickle at the bottom of your foot uh, mm. to to back a back a side on the plus here. So. Once again, listening to probably listening to the heart, not the head, and that's not always the best thing to do. So, tends to flicker on the on the Bath plus. I don't know. I think that um, this is where I like Bath the most when the pluses are big. This is where I fancy them the most. I don't fancy them um, with the uh, in small minuses or even uh, small pluses, but big pluses like this, I really do like this Bath side. And if you look at their past few fixtures, they have covered. Um, other than that Irish game where they lost twenty five ten, so. You know there are some stats to to back or stats we got relating to the spread that back you up there, Neil. So I feel you. Um, let's go to our next match on Saturday, quarter past seven. Harlequins versus Exeter, a massive game. Um, Exeter they are just outside the top four. They one point behind Gloucester. They of course uh, won last week against Sale. Sale struggling a bit. Um, yeah, against Quinns who. Uh, th- they're only on 34 points. It's a, The mid-table is very tight at the moment. So wins are very important. Uh, so there's a lot to play for. The spread is two and a half, favoring the home side, Quinns. What do you think, Neil? Yeah, Carl, this is a this is a very strong fancy from me. I'm all over the Quinns to, uh, to beat Exeter here. This is a repeat of, of the Gallagher Premiership final a couple of seasons ago, not last season, the season before. This game's getting played at, at Twickenham. So... One game every every year for for Quinns gets played um, sort of at the at the home of rugby as you as they call it over in England. Um, Quinns with a big big boost to them and getting and getting Marcus Smith back from from England international duty as well as Joe Marchand. So I expect that's that uh, 10, 12, 13 access in in Smith, Esther Hazen, and Marchand to run absolutely rampant this weekend against Exeter. I thought Exeter were quite impressive for large portions of the game against Sale. But once again, it just goes to show that a bit of an experience um, sort of led to their down, led to their downfall, and continuing a couple of points in the second half. But they really had to grind out out that that victory here. But I just think that Harlequins are going to put on an absolute clinic um, over at Twickenham. They've done it before against the extra Chiefs, and they won't be scared to do it again. So mm. I also expect that it's going to be a massive statement from Marcus Smith um, to really just knock down the door for for Steve Borthwick, the the England coach here. So mm. full value and lots of confidence on that Harlequins minus two and a half. Okay. Okay, well, let's move to Sunday now. And it's a top of the table clash. One faces two. The Sale Sharks host Saddison's. A Sale favored at four and a half. A Sale have lost their last two, as I mentioned. Um, They do have a nice buffer between second and third. Uh, The Saints, who are in third, are behind by eight points. So there is a buffer there. Um, But yeah, a a big start here from from Sale in in recent weeks. Do you fancy them with this minus? I know... um, we also perhaps aren't sales biggest fans when it comes to these small minuses. Um, what do you think? Yeah, Carl, this this is a tricky one. But my my headset when I saw that uh, Ben Earl had been called up to the England camp and he, camp and he wasn't going to be available for Saracens uh, this weekend. And I just think that this is the type of fixture where sales sale absolutely come alive. 
they love sort of hosting a, a big heavyweight in Saracens here, especially at their home home turf over at the AJ Bell in Manchester. A couple of very disappointing results for sale in recent weeks. That Northampton game still just just is is hurting me a bit, where they were absolutely fluffed after being about twenty points ahead. Last weekend were absolutely nowhere in the first half against Exeter. Then a spirited second half performance just wasn't enough to get over the line. So I feel like two wrongs don't make a right, but this could definitely be be sort of the turning point for sale in, in welcoming Saracens here. So I expect them to use that massive pack of theirs and absolutely bully bully Saracens over in the set piece and and at the collision time. So sale sale minus three and a half. I mentioned before that that they absolutely they hate to beat a, a minus handicap, but I'm just hoping that this this is the exception to the rule here. So yeah, I'll be looking to take sale on this minus. Okay. Okay, our final match um, of the weekend rugby. Uh, Newcastle versus London Irish. Not the most high-profile sides, but two sides I really, really like. Uh, Newcastle, they are favoured, uh, two and a half. And, and that's fair. Irish's record away from home is very poor. I think, yeah, they've won one match uh, out of their eight played this year. Um, so... You can understand why the bookies are maybe leaning towards uh, Newcastle. And they kept it tight against Saracens last week. Um, yeah, your thoughts here? Two and a half. What do you think, Neil? Yeah, I can't. Uh, tricky one. Um, New- well, London Irish can can sort of close in on, on those playoff hopes. Once again, Newcastle, it's, I guess it's much of the same competition after competition, sort of languishing near, near the bottom end. But once again, over on their home turf, they really do put up, a, a I guess you could say, a, a spirited performance. In a, in a choice game against London Irish, which which have shown that they aren't too on too too strong on the road here, I've just got once again got a funny inkling that Newcastle somehow managed to get over the line here. So they've they've had a big boost in the Argentinian international centres here. They've got a lot of doggedness over in the forward pack, lots of pace out wide in in the Adam Rad one. So I just think that Newcastle Falcons in a choice game against London Irish, who aren't too confident travelling on the road, who who like to think they'll be interested for, in this fixture, but it is a tough place to go and play. I just think that full value has to lie with the hosts in this one. So tentative call, but I think that the right one is to to take the home side to win the game. Okay, yeah. I'm pro- with you looking at historical data there and Irish's really poor record away from home. I can totally understand that. Your strongest fancies, obviously you've mentioned one of them in the Gallagher Premiership. That's Harlequins on the minus. Uh, anything else? Yeah, come next next strongest fancy will will be that Sale Sharks minus three and a half against Saracens. I mentioned before that, that Saracens would would be losing Ben Earl to international duty, and he's been an absolute kingpin for for them in the back row. Sale sort of they've just got a lot of quality scattered throughout their forward pack. I just think that they will have enough to get over the line in this one. Okay, okay, we went through a lot of games. I think it is just under twenty in total. Uh, so a lot for our listeners to pick and choose from. Neil, thank you so much once again. Um, actually, before I let you go, uh, any particular matches you're looking out for as a fan and not as a punter that you're looking forward to and for enjoyment purposes only? Yeah, Carl, it's just in the in the in Super Rugby specific. I think there are going to be a lot of cracking fixtures. That Blues Brumbies uh, fixture standing out to me. Probably it, it seems like it's going to be sort of one one v one over in the Australia versus New Zealand over there. So I think that's going to be an absolute cracking fixture. Then in in the Premiership, um, I'm very very excited to see that that Quinn's Chiefs game at at Twickenham. That's going to be another cracker. I'm expecting a monumental performance from Marcus Smith over in that one. And then just in the URC, I think it's a bit of bit of home ground bias here and and home support bias. But very excited to see the the two local South African derbies go neck and neck here. Sort of the the Transvaal derby and the and the coastal derby. So lots of lot uh, an absolutely full roster of rugby. Lots to get your, your teeth stuck into, but once again, tread cautiously out there because there's lots of money to be made and probably a lot of money to be lost as well. Okay. All right, Neil. Uh, I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening and your load shedding. Thank you so much again for joining me. And we will, of course, be back next week uh, with more from our uh, betting show. Thanks again, Neil. No, it's a pleasure, Carl, and yeah, good luck to all the punters out there, and let's let's hope it's another cracking weekend. Mm-hmm.